Well, William Byron is in the house. You got a, obviously a, a stressful weekend, it seems like, ahead of you at Daytona, racing for one of the final spots in the playoffs. How do you manage aggression versus trying to get stage points in this race and then also just survival, making it to the finish? Yeah, I think for us, it, it's necessary to get those stage points because that's going to really help us along in our, our points uh, battle. So looking forward to hopefully getting the stage points. I feel like we have a, a good idea of how to get those over the past couple of, of years um, in the stages. So looking forward to that and hopefully um, hopefully we can just uh, battle it out and, and uh, you know, get a few stage wins and, and go for the race win. I'm sure you've been asked many times, like, what's the strategy going in? Are you going to play conservative to make it to the end? Or, you know, what's the game plan, at least for you guys right now, going into Daytona? Well, I think for us, you know, we've got to be aggressive. So I'm going to be on offense for, for most of the race. But um, there is a point of the race that's kind of a lull period. Um, you know, at the start of stage three, I feel like there's really not much going on. So if you happen to be at the front, it's great. But if you're not, I don't think it's too much of a panic. So I'm going to try to kind of play that by ear and see how, how the race intensity is. Um, but, you know, definitely the end of the stages is important. Um, and then the end of the end of the race, it seems to jam up kind of seems to jam up as you, as you get closer to the, to the end. So you have to be in the right position with probably 25 laps to go. I always like looking at the aerial shots of these races and probably one thing I can see a little bit better on TV versus behind the, the wheel for you guys is the runs and being able to see when runs are developing. So behind the wheel, how soon can you sense that something's coming? How far ahead can you see a run in, uh, in tracks like Daytona? Yeah, you kind of feel it all the way through the seat, you know, through, through the back of your really through your back and your shoulders. I mean, it kind of, uh, you know, the energy just starts to push your car forward. So, um, you know, I think it, it depends on where you are on the track, but you can definitely start to sense those based on how rapidly somebody's coming in the mirror or just um, some of the things that the air does and moves around the car and makes, makes your car sense certain things. So it definitely is, um, it's kind of a feeling that you can understand after a while and you don't necessarily have to look up in the mirror um, but then to make blocks and, and do the things you need to do to, to be in position, you have to uh, have to look up in your mirror and, and sense those things as well. So you can like feel it almost like sense the energy in your chest. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's definitely a, it's a unique feeling. Um, you can feel it on some other tracks like Michigan maybe, but it's a uh, unique to Daytona and Talladega really just that, that feeling that you have. And uh, you know, it's an amazing feeling when you take the lead at that place and the whole track is clean in front of you and that that yellow line is so big and the track's so wide that it just it's a unique feeling taking the lead but um it's hard to hard to keep it for sure what's the safest place i would assume the lead is where everyone's goal is to be or you know is, is hanging back a safe spot or, or is up front the, the place where everyone wants i mean i don't think you're really safe anywhere at a super yeah. speedway unless you're single file um you know, and, and you hope that the tires stay up and everything goes well. But I think honestly, some of the most treacherous moments are way in the back and, and kind of uh, there's so much energy that builds towards the back of the pack because it's so spread out that you get these monster runs, um, you know, back into the pack and guys kind of close those gaps and, and uh, guys kind of merge back into the middle of the hornet's nest. So it just becomes a mess back there to try to get, um, get yourself towards the front. So you kind of want to be I'd say that the safest place is probably fifth or sixth and, and kind of up there in the lead group, but maybe not the lead guy where you're having to make all these aggressive blocks. So um, it's nice to be the leader of a lane for sure. I think it, it gives you a lot of options. So that's a good place to be. And then obviously the safest and best place is victory lane when there's no other cars to work with. But um, yeah. uh, so yeah, enough sure. talk about Daytona. I'm sure you've talked about it a lot and, and thought about it a lot. I want to move to the next weekend, Darlington, where you're running a really cool Jimmy Johnson paint scheme to pay tribute to him. I know you've posted pictures of, of you being a fan of Jimmy way before you ever would have dreamed of being in the Cup Series. So what's it like not only paying tribute to him, but racing against him on the track? Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, Jimmy has been such a, he's been such a, you know, 
piece of my racing history and, and kind of how I got involved in racing and enjoyed it. So it's going to be really neat to run that paint scheme. And I think it looks really good with the Liberty colors. So I'm excited about it. Um, hopefully it comes, hopefully it turns out, you know, how it, how it should. And it looks really nice. So just looking forward to that. I think it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it, it definitely will look cool. And Darlington, man, we've gone there at least a few times already. Normally this is right around the first time we're going to be going there this season. Yeah. So how different do you think this race is going to be given that everyone has an extended notebook? Yeah, I think that honestly, you know, it's going to be at this point, your third go around at a racetrack is going to be, uh, everything's going to be pretty fine tuned. So I feel like your, your heights of the car and just, um, your aero balance and all those things are going to be really, really close. So there's not going to be a lot of guessing. Um, you know, you're going to be trying to fine tune details and, uh, try to work on your car setup to maybe get get a little bit more grip. So, I, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a great race. Um, I think a lot of guys are going to be really fast um, because of the fact that we've been there a few times. So, um, and I think you'll see the same thing at Bristol uh, because we've been there two times now this year. So this will be our third time. So, it's gonna it's gonna make for uh, a very very aggressive race. A lot of good cars. Yeah, actually, that's funny you mentioned Bristol. I was going to go there next. Uh, the playoff schedule this year looks really different, especially the cutoff race being at Daytona. Obviously, yeah. for me, who's a big fan of the entertaining part, you know, that's awesome. You have these tough racetracks that you guys have to race at for cutoff and elimination races. But as a driver, when you see that and you're like, oh, man, we got to end the season yeah. at Daytona and Bristol, like what goes through your mind? Well, it's tough. I mean, you got to kind of leave a little bit up to just fate. And, and uh, you know, if you're – you know, in, in a tight position, you know, you, you've got to, got to prepare for the worst, I guess, somewhat, um, you know, so I think that honestly, those places just bring that level of unpredictability that um, sometimes you can't control. So I try not to, to worry about what I can't control, um, just what I can. And that's just, going, you know, going as fast as I can and trying to know the little details of the track that are going to maybe put me above another notch uh, over my competition. You know, as 2020 winds down, it's kind of an interesting year to kind of look back at and see where we came just from a few months. Besides pandemic and regardless what happens to Daytona, what do you think 2020 is going to define for you and the 24 team? Well, I think it's been a it's been a tough year. You know, we haven't had the results that we wanted to have, um, you know, especially based on the end of last year and how strong we were. So. I think honestly, we're, we're still building and, uh, you know, we're going to have to figure out, you know, what that next step is for us um, as a team. Uh, but I think that we've done some good things. We've had, we've, we've executed really, really some good races um, that just haven't panned out exactly how we wanted to. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be, um, you know, kind of 2020 in a, in a <laughs> nutshell, really for us, kind of like everybody else, it seems like besides maybe Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin, it's just been a, it's been a tough year, but <laughs> on and off track. So I think we'll just kind of reset for 2021. I think that is the the key right there. Everyone's looking for a reset in 21. Uh, yeah. Well, hopefully uh, 2020 can turn around with a good result in Daytona. And, uh, you know, I have to ask, because I was looking, I was watching the old interview way back in March before we even went, went racing. Uh, are you still doing like breakfast every morning on race day? Yeah, I don't do breakfast as much on, at the racetrack, but I do... Uh, <laughs> I do lunch and, uh, you know, it's kind of the same. It's kind of boring, but yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. That was a good time for, uh, April and May, uh, I guess or March, April, May, that was fun. So it's crazy to think about this year. It, everything's gone so fast. It's really, uh, it's really hard to imagine. We're already, you know, looking at the playoffs. So it's, it's been a crazy year. Crazy for sure. Well, William, I wish you the best of luck this weekend at Daytona. Hopefully you can make a good run in the playoffs with a good result in Daytona. I appreciate you coming on today. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.